very good morning and welcome to the breakfast news on Raja Sabha television your uh, one stop show for all uh, the very latest developments uh, in national international sports and uh, business arena i am ashwarya kapoor let us start the bulletin with the headlines prime minister narendra modi addresses uh, bureaucrats on civil services day tells them to change from being a regulator to an enabler prime minister to address the bjp cms the top party leaders on sunday Service charge in restaurants not mandatory. Government says customers have the right to decide if they should pay extra. Issues guidelines. Yogi government orders probe into Lucknow Agra Expressway land deal. Farmland was allegedly passed off as land for residential purposes. Supreme Court question center on making Aadhaar mandatory for procuring PAN cards asks how can it be forced on people And gunman who shot dead a policeman in central Paris named Karim Sharoofi had several years in a prison served for various crimes including for shooting at police officers Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Friday addressed the bureaucrats on Civil Services Day asking them to break barriers and stereotypes and work together as a team to perform and transform. Modi urged the bureaucrats to change their mindset and their style of working and make excellence a habit. Addressing the country's the top officials in Delhi, Prime Minister Modi said from regulator we need to be an enabling entity. Asking senior officers to introspect if their experience is becoming a burden Modi spoke about hierarchy and bureaucracy continuing to remain an issue which was inherited from colonial rulers. Prime Minister also asserted that he did not lack the political will to carry out reforms. He also suggested the use of social media, e-governance and mobile governance as a means for them to reach out to the people. Political will power ye reform kar sakta hai. Lekin ब्यूरोक्रेटिक सिस्टम गवर्नेंस ये परफॉर्म करता है और जन भागीदारी ट्रांसफॉर्म करती है हमें इन तीनों को एक वेवलेंथ में चलाना बहुत जरूरी है जब हम तीनों को एक वेवलेंथ में चलाते हैं तो हमें इच्छित परिणाम मिलता है and prime minister narendra modi will address the bjp chief ministers and top party leaders in the national capital on sunday In his address, the Prime Minister Modi is likely to ask them to focus on the agenda of good governance and development. BJP President Amit Shah will also speak to the leaders. The attendees include 13 BJP chief ministers, five deputy chief ministers, as well as Rajnath Singh, Nitin Gadkari, Sushma Swaraj, and M Venkaiah Naidu, among other union ministers. Modi's pitch will include the need for them to focus on his development agenda with an emphasis on the poorer section of the society. This would be the second party meeting of all our party chief ministers with Modi since he came to power in 2014. A similar exercise was held last August. The meeting comes with the next set of assembly elections due later this year, and Prime Minister Modi and Shah already toning up the organizational machinery for the 2019 Lok Sabha polls. On to other top story, restaurants cannot force customers to pay a service charge. This is a totally voluntary and not mandatory. Food and uh, Consumer Affairs Minister Ram Vilas Paswan informed this on Friday. Paswan, in a series of uh, tweets, uh, said that hotels, restaurants should not decide how much a service charge is to be paid by the customer. As per the guidelines, the column of a service charge in the bill will now be left blank to customers to fill up before making the final payment. Aswan added that now government has approved guidelines on service charge and that guidelines are being sent to the states for necessary action at their ends. In January, the Department of Consumer Affairs has stated that a service charge on food bills is not compulsory and a customer can choose to have it waived if he is not satisfied with the experience. The service charges are not mandatory. The service charges are optional. जिसको सर्विस चार्ज देना होगा सर्विस चार्ज देगा जिसको सर्विस चार्ज नाम का कोई चीज़ नहीं है टिप्स नाम का है तो जिसको टिप्स देना होगा 
बैरा को क्या कहते हैं कि दे देगा जिसको नहीं देना होगा नहीं देगा India has categorically said that any artificial check on visas in any country will be fought legally both bilaterally and in the WTO as well the statement comes in the wake of the H1B visa curbs being amalgamated by the US and similar restraints also being announced by the UK Australia and New Zealand the government said that Indians have gone to western nations not to immigrate with accumulated wealth but to actively serve the countries in their development The H1B visa was the hot topic for Union Finance Minister Arun Jaitley when he met US Commerce Secretary Wilbur Ross in Washington DC on Friday pointing out that US Indians are contributing to America's development in a big way Jaitley asked the US administration to review its visa policy in its own interest before Jaitley's meeting the external affairs ministry also cautioned the US administration about its move you know it is not an immigration issue as we have said earlier it's basically a trade and services issue there is a mutuality of interest is involved over here there are indian companies indian workers in united states there are also united states companies in india as you know very large united states companies and i don't need to name them in the it sector uh, which which dominate the world the multilaterals Jaitley is in Washington to attend the annual spring meeting of the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank. On his agenda are meetings with his counterparts from the US, Australia and the European countries. Commerce Minister Nirmala Sitharaman has already set the tone for his talks by saying that India could take up the visa issue with the WTO. United States, uh, UK, Australia and very quickly New Zealand and so on. Countries now very clearly uh, raising protectionist walls as regards uh, service trade um, it is time that we have a global framework on uh, moderating i wouldn't want to use the word regulating moderating giving a framework within which trade and services can happen that's one issue we will be actively pursuing it in the wto the indian government is also in talks with industry on how to comply with salary issues of their employees Discussions are also on with other countries who are considering following the US steps that could impact Indian professionals abroad. The implications of the changes that will come about in the visa regimes will be part of our conversations uh, on these matters with the concerned countries. The government has clearly stated that Indian immigrants are not asylum seekers. They contribute to the development of their destination nations with high caliber skills. As such, Visa regimes designed to restrict their entry could only end up dampening the progress of these countries. Be it USA, Australia or New Zealand, these are just executive orders and it had to be enacted by law of their respective parliament and that will take some time. India will have that legroom to campaign before the governments and legislators of that country and also take measures inside our own country so that they can understand the impact of these enactments akhilesh suman for rajasthan television with kamal professor narayan in delhi the supreme court on friday said that it will decide on whether aadhar card can be made mandatory for the filing of income tax returns next week the apex court asked the government to justify the need for making aadhar card mandatory for filing of it returns Attorney General Mukul Rothugi appearing for the center told a bench that there were instances that one person was having a number of PAN cards and these fake cards were being misused the bench meanwhile postponed the matter on 25th of April the union government last month made uh, providing once aadhar number compulsory detail for filing of it returns and for obtaining and uh, retaining the permanent account number or the PAN number Big story coming in from Uttar Pradesh where well, Yogi Adityanath government will probe into alleged irregularities in the high profile Agra Expressway project. The project was initiated by the previous Akhilesh Yadav government. The probe will include irregularities into the land acquisition, construction quality, tendering and payments of compensation and costs paid for the land purchase. probe will be conducted in all the 230 villages where land were purchased or acquired for the project the newly appointed chairman of up expressways industrial development authority has written letters to all the 10 districts magistrates associated with the project return the unused fund of the project to the government immediately 
They have also been told to submit a detailed report about land acquisition, payments of compensation and price paid to the farmers in purchasing the land for the project. Government had uh, purchased about 300 and, uh, I beg your pardon, 3,500 hectares of land from uh, 30,000 uh, farmers in different districts for the project. The decision uh, for a probe comes uh, four days after an FIR was filed in Firozabad against uh, five uh, Chakbandi officers and 22 landowners for showing agricultural land in village uh, Bachela, Bacheli as residential land. It is noteworthy that residential plots are eligible for greater compensation. The previous government had claimed that the expressway was constructed in a record time. More news from Uttar Pradesh in its uh, first major bureaucratic reshuffle after coming into power in Uttar Pradesh. Uh, the Yogi Adityanath government uh, on Friday transferred 12 IPS and uh, 7 IAS officers. UP's uh, DGP Javed Ahmed has also been shunted out. A 1980 batch IPS officer Sulkan Singh, who was the DG training, will replace Ahmed, who has been shifted as the DG of Uttar Pradesh Provincial Armed Constabulary. Seven IAS officers have also been transferred. During the recent assembly polls, the BJP had petitioned the election commission to remove Ahmed, alleging that he was working at the behest of the then Samajwadi Party government. Chief Minister Adityanath, who has completed one month in the office, has also swapped the place of ADG Law and Order, Daljeet Singh Chaudhary and ADG Economic Offence Serving and Logistics Aditya Mishra. Meanwhile, the newly appointed DGP Sulkhan Singh has assured people of equal treatment while saying that uh, strict action would be taken against the culprits without any discrimination. Uttar Pradesh Police is a very successful police. Bal hai. इस पुलिस बल ने पूरे देश में पुलिस को नेतृत्व दिया है इसकी मिसाल पूरे देश में दी जाती है यह पुलिस बल ठीक से मोटिवेट रहेगा तो बहुत अच्छा काम करेगा और शासन की अपेक्षाओं पर यह पुलिस बल खड़ा उतरेगा न्यूज़ फ्रॉम जम्मू एंड कश्मीर नाउ एंड होम मिनिस्टर राजनाथ सिंह ऑन फ्राइडे ऑल द स्टेट्स टू एंश्योर द सेफ्टी ऑफ कश्मीरीज लिविंग इन डिफरेंट पार्ट्स ऑफ द कंट्री Condemning the alleged incidents of harassment of कश्मीरीज द होम मिनिस्टर सेड दैट दे आर लाइक एनी अदर इंडियन an advisory is being sent by the Home Ministry to all the states to ensure the safety and security of uh, people from the valley. His statement comes amidst the reports alleging that Kashmiri students in Rajasthan and Uttar Pradesh were being threatened after the latest incidents of stone pelting and assault uh, on security personnel by the Kashmiri youths in the valley. The Home Minister said that a proper inquiry should be initiated in each of the cases and that uh, the strongest possible action should be taken against the guilty. Meanwhile, uh, welcoming the government's uh, assertion on the safety of Kashmiris, the Congress party has said that the freedom of every citizen should be protected. और इस सच्चाई को भी कोई नगार नहीं सकता है कि भारत की सुरक्षा और भारत की समृद्धि में हमारे कश्मीर के भी बहुत सारे नौजवान अपना योगदान दे रहे हैं मैंने आज गृह सचिव को भी कहा है कि इस संबंध में सभी राज्यों को तुरंत एडवाइजरी जारी कर दी जाए Political news uh, from Jammu and Kashmir uh, amid the growing tension between the coalition partners uh, BJP National uh, General Secretary and uh, Appointment for Jammu and Kashmir, Ram Madhav uh, met uh, State Governor N. N. Vora and Senior PDP Leader Haseeb Dharoob to discuss the prevailing political situation in Jammu and Kashmir. The meeting was also attended by Jammu and Kashmir Deputy Chief Minister Nirmal Singh and State President uh, Sat Sharma. The meeting as assumes a significance in the view of growing tension between the coalition partners over several issues, particularly the remarks made by some BJP leaders against stone pelters of Kashmir. In his meeting with the governor, Ram Madhav discussed the initiatives for bringing peace and normalcy in Kashmir. Ram Madhav also reviewed preparations for the forthcoming two-day visit of a state party chief, Amit Shah, in Jammu. News from the national capital. Over 56,000 police and paramilitary personnel will be deployed to ensure that the upcoming Delhi civic polls are conducted without any glitches. A total of 774 uh, premises and uh, 4,748 booths in the city are sensitive and hypersensitive, according to the Delhi Police. Delhi Police has made adequate and full security arrangements in all facets, including anti-terror measures. 
Meanwhile, making the last pitch, uh, Congress on Friday claimed uh, that the party will uh, win all uh, over 200 seats in the civic body polls that are scheduled on Sunday. The Congress also took at the, a dig at the BJP and uh, ARP, accusing them of running a negative campaign instead of uh, suggesting solutions. On the other hand, the Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal attacked the ruling BJP, saying that it had become synonymous with chikungunya, malaria, dengue and garbage. And the people of Delhi would be risking their children's lives if they voted uh, for the party in the 23rd of April MCD polls. Traditionally, a contest between the Congress and the BJP, the elections uh, to Delhi's uh, three municipal corporations on Sunday would see a three-way fight uh, with the Aam Aadmi Party contesting for the first time. Ten years ago, MCD has been BJP in the government. Ten years ago, BJP has not been able to clean Delhi. तो जो पार्टी 10 साल में दिल्ली साफ नहीं कर पाई 10 साल में मच्छर नहीं हटा पाई वो पार्टी अब आने वाले समय में दिल्ली साफ कैसे करेगी अगर कल अगर आप बीजेपी को वोट देते हो और कल को आपके घर में आपके बच्चे को डेंगू हो जाए अगर आपके बच्चे को चिकनगुनिया हो जाए तो ये सोच लेना फिर आप जिम्मेदार हो अपने बच्चे के डेंगू के लिए लगभग चार पर पोलिंग बूथ के करीब हमने करा है और हमारा कांग्रेस का ये सर्वे के हिसाब से अनुसार से हमारी 208 सीटें कांग्रेस की दिल्ली के अंदर हम लोग कॉरपोरेशन में हम लोग जीतने वाले हैं आने वाले 23 तारीख को म्यूनिसिपल कॉरपोरेशन ऑफ दिल्ली के इलेक्शन के बाबत दिल्ली पुलिस के पुख्ता सिक्योरिटी के इंतजाम लगाए गए हैं ये इलेक्शन दिल्ली के लिए एक बहुत ही महत्वपूर्ण इलेक्शन है और डेली पुलिस के लिए एक बहुत ही इम्पोर्टेंट सिक्योरिटी अरेंजमेंट and it is not just the MCD polls uh, that the Congress is looking at, uh, but uh, other states as well. Congress uh, Vice President Rahul Gandhi has exhorted his uh, party workers to prepare for the upcoming assembly elections in Gujarat, Himachal Pradesh and Karnataka. On Friday, Rahul Gandhi met around three dozen young and senior leaders of the party in the national capital and according to sources, asked them to focus on the workers and organization in addition to propagating the works uh, done by the previous uh, Congress government in the states and uh, in the states where it is in power at the moment. Congress Vice President is uh, facing severe criticism over party's electoral losses and several leaders have left the party, accusing the leadership of not being able to steer the party towards victory. And in related news, with the BJP's uh, thumping victories in Uttar Pradesh and Uttarakhand, a sense of urgency has cropped among the opposition parties to forge unity ahead of the presidential election. After Bihar Chief Minister Nitish Kumar, his CPIM General Secretary Sitaram Yechuri met Congress President Sonia Gandhi to discuss jointly fielding an opposition candidate against the nominee of the BJP-led NDA in the election for the president in July. The left has also been in touch with other leaders like Sharad Pawar of the Nationalist Congress Party or the NCP and Lalu Prasad Yadav of the RJD. Lalu Yadav has said that he will also soon meet Sonia Gandhi. There has been a talk of the opposition fielding President Pranam Mukherjee for a second term if he agrees to contest, but sources have indicated that the President would only be agreeable if Prime Minister Narendra Modi agrees to re-nominate him. The purpose was that uh, we had decided, the CPIM, and uh, along with the other left parties, that we should try and find a consensual candidate, a candidate for the post of the President, in the present juncture, the president uh, post is very critical and uh, we require somebody who is very strong and firm on the commitment to the Indian constitution, to the secular democratic values of our republic and it is the search for finding a common candidate which can be put up for the post of the president. So that was the major issue for discussion. And in breakfast news, time for a very short break. We'll be right back with more news. Stay tuned. In 1981, when I joined Archaeological Survey of India, I was uh, given uh, to explore mm. the district Riva, extreme north of uh, Madhya Pradesh. Orion Stopa. That was a very exciting discovery by me. That site is a very important site. Today it is a nationally protected monument. 
Watch your record with Dr. Fani Kant Mishra, retired regional director at ASI Kolkata, only on Rajya Sabha Television. Thanks for staying with us. On Friday, the European Union and India joined hands to step up its uh, effort to counter terrorism besides agreeing uh, to expand engagement in a broad range of areas including maritime security, trade, energy and environment. EU Foreign Policy Chief uh, Federica Mogherini met Prime Minister Narendra Modi and in a separate uh, meet uh, met External Affairs Minister Sushma Swaraj. The EU said uh, that the two sides resolved uh, to enhance cooperation both at bilaterally and uh, multilaterally in combating terrorism apart from agreeing to work closely in dealing with climate change, sustainable development and ensuring free and fair trade. Mogherini, who arrived in Delhi on a two-day visit, also held delegation-level talks with Minister of State for External Affairs M.J. Akbar, during which the EU side is understood to have pushed for early resumption of talks for the long-pending India-EU broad-based trade and investment agreement. Preparations for the annual India-EU summit are scheduled to be held uh, here later this year were also reviewed. And on to news uh, from uh, the quick uh, spate of developments in uh, Tamil Nadu. Well, uh, signs of a thaw on the merger of uh, two AIA DMK factions came to the forefront as uh, the EPS and OPS camps announced uh, the formation of their respective committees to hold discussions on a merger. Rajya Sabha MP A.R. Vethi Lingam will lead this uh, panel set up uh, by the Palani Sami group while the Paneer Selvam camp has named a senior leader and uh, former minister K.P. Munasami as the leader of a seven-member committee. Both the camps are unitedly seeking to redeem the two leaves symbol of the party. The developments came a day after the talks appeared to have hit a roadblock with the Paneer Selvam camp seeking a formal expulsion of B.K. Sasikala and T.T.V. Dinakran from the party. It had also sought a CBI probe into the circumstances leading to the death of former Chief Minister J. Jalalitha. Meanwhile, the party's Deputy General Secretary Dinakaran will today appear before the crime bar branch of Delhi Police in a case of alleged bribery to the Election Commission officials for retrieving the party's two leaves symbol. News uh, from West Bengal and uh, the Chief Minister Mamata Banerjee on Friday was re-elected as the chairperson of uh, the All India Trinmool Congress for the next six years. Addressing her party workers in Kolkata, Mamata Banerjee called up regional uh, parties to unite and also take on the BJP, which she alleged had unleashed a vendetta politics. Eyeing the 2019 Lok Sabha elections, uh, she emphasized on the party the workers are to go to the grassroots levels and take the challenge for two years. Meanwhile, Mamata Banerjee also dismissed the allegations against the 12 TMC leaders and ministers in the Narada Sting operation. More news are from across the country in Nationwide. At least 14 people were charged to death in Madhya Pradesh's Chindwara district after a major fire broke out during the sale of kerosene oil and various food grains at a fair price shop. Police said that the cause of the fire was not yet known. Madhya Pradesh Chief Minister Shivrat Singh Chauhan has announced an ex ratio of 4 lakh rupees for the kin of those killed and 50,000 rupees each to the injured. Prime Minister Narendra Modi also tweeted his shock over the incident. At least 14 people were killed and 15 others injured when a heavily laden truck rammed into a roadside shop near the Yera Pedu police station in Chittur district. The incident occurred as a driver lost control of the truck after hitting an electric pole. Andhra Pradesh government has expressed grief over the incident and has announced 5 lakh rupees ex gratia to the kin of the deceased. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has also expressed grief. And a Delhi court will today hear the National Herald case. Subramanian Swami's counsel had earlier submitted a list of witnesses and other evidences against the accused. The court had previously dismissed Swami's plea seeking documents related to the case against Congress President Sonia Gandhi and Vice President Rahul Gandhi along with other accused in the case. On to the top international story now. The gunman killed after shooting dead a policeman on the Champs-Élysées in France has been named. 
Kareem Shurfi, a convicted criminal, killed a police officer and injured two other policemen in the Champs Elysee area on a Thursday. He had four criminal convictions for attempted murder, violence and theft. He was detained in February for threatening to kill a police before being freed. Shurfi used an assault rifle to kill the police officer with two bullets on the head. A note defending the Islamic State was found near his body. Security forces later shot Shurfi dead. Now, French investigators are trying to find out whether he had any accomplices. The attack came just ahead of Sunday's presidential polls in France. L'auteur a alors mis pied à terre, a contourné son véhicule par l'avant et a fait feu avec un fusil d'assaut Kalachnikov en direction de la vitre conducteur du quart de police, atteignant mortellement de deux balles à la tête. A big story coming in from Afghanistan, where at least 50 Afghan soldiers were killed in an attack by Taliban insurgents on a military base in northern Balkh province. The Taliban fighters wore army uniforms and drove through military checkpoints before launching the raid. The military says that Friday's attack took place near a mosque at the base located in the city of mazar -e sharif The Taliban said in a statement that they launched the attack. The base at mazar -e sharif is the home to Afghan National Army's 209th Corps, responsible for providing security the most for northern Afghanistan, including Kunduz province, which has seen heavy fighting recently. And finally, people across the world are celebrating Earth Day today. Celebrated since 1970, 22nd of April is every day observed to raise awareness on global environmental issues and activism. Events coordinated by the Earth Day Network are being held globally. The scientific community world over is all geared up for the March for Science today. The occasion is now recognized in more than 193 countries and programs are being held to demonstrate support for the environmental protection. On Earth Day 2016, the landmark Paris Agreement was signed by the US, China and around 120 other countries. Meanwhile, Google has also changed its doodle for the day, supporting and promoting the environment protection. And with this, we come to an end of this edition of news. But news and updates continue on Rajasabha Television. Thanks for watching.